Cassie, do you know what? I have been lucky enough to more or less travel the world and create gardens. But this, talking to you <laughs> about growing and cooking, has got to be one of the best things I've ever done. I, I, I love both of them. Obviously, I'm much better gardener than I, than I am <laughs> cook. So to be in a room with somebody that cooks like you do, and talks about cooking the way that you do. <laughs> this is like absolutely amazing. And and today we're talking about tomatoes. Yes, I love a good tomato. This is one of my favourite things to talk about. So I'm very excited about this episode. Yeah, and there's tomatoes and tomatoes, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, there's it's such a broad spectrum between a yeah. good tomato and a bad tomato, isn't it? They're just worlds apart. Yeah. So hopefully by talking about growing your own, we can lean more into the good tomato side of things and encourage people to get out and grow some of their own yeah i think definitely i think because i think tomatoes and you and i have talked about families and kids experience and Mm. and i would say i look at mine my number two is 24 years old and he loves his food Mm. but the only time i eat a standalone tomato is if i've grown it Mm. otherwise it has to be cooked it has to be in a sauce and it it gets you thinking and you think you realise that that most people's experience of tomatoes is probably what they get from the supermarket. Mm -hmm. They're one, to me, they're one thing, don't eat out of season. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. A tomato out of season, it's just bland and bitter and it's not bringing much to the party, is it? Whereas at peak season, it'd be hard to find something more beautiful than a homegrown sweet delicious tomato there's so much you can do with them in the kitchen but just eaten straight off the vine at that time of year oh, they're just amazing aren't yeah, they they are amazing and i think that's the other thing with grow your own when you grow your own ultimately you can buy for flavor whereas actually a lot of the time when we go to the shops you know, a lot of those things have been bred because they either travel well because they've come from another country. Mm. They look good and they're of a certain size mm-hmm. and this, that, the other. For me, growing your own tomatoes is brilliant. But what's your first experience of tasting a homegrown tomato? I actually don't think I was much of a fan of the tomato no. growing up. One of my earliest memories is actually the smell of the tomato vines in my mum's greenhouse and going up the garden and picking the tomatoes. And that smell is so evocative of childhood and being in the garden with my parents and it brings back so many memories but actually I wasn't a fan of the tomato itself especially not a tomatoey sauce or something like that I might have a couple off the vine but I think I came to enjoy tomatoes later in life and now they're such a staple in my kitchen they're something I cook with whether it's in when they're in season fresh or tin tomatoes when they're out of season I cook with them multiple times a week they're always in the store cupboard if not the fridge or on the countertop and I just love them so memory wise it's more about the picking and the yeah. smell and being around growing them. But we didn't eat many tomatoes actually growing up. My childhood was filled with very kind of classic British dishes of yeah. meat and veg, but tomatoes didn't feature too heavily, actually. Yeah, whereas I suppose where I come from, mine's definitely a grandparent thing, mm. but my sort of family were London and then slowly moved out. So my grandparents lived in the Lee Valley, where the Lee Valley is rammed with tomato or mm. always was and commu- cucumber nurseries so I can remember having a, an Italian mate at primary school and his old man used to have a tomato nursery in the Lee Valley and, and that was the first thing that ever blew my mind about tomato plants is how long they were mm. so again we think a tomato plant you know will grow up oh, three four foot that's about, uh. that's about these things just used to go along the nursery. You know, and it used to be amazing. But then I understood that they weren't all grown on soil and they used to grow them on rock wall mm-hmm. and a lot like they do now, hydroponics, so they drive liquid into them. Mm. But, but actually, my the bit that blew my mind that, that stayed with me and that scent that you talk about is I used to stay with Tidy Nan, I used to call her. So Tidy Nan is Gruffy Nan and Tidy Nan... They had a little greenhouse just at the end, this classic 70s garden, concrete path, block the lawn, washing line. But down on the left-hand side, mate, they had a small greenhouse. And if I was a good boy, in the morning, on a hot day, early in the morning, I could go down 
and open the greenhouse. So I used to run down. <laughs> they had a tortoise, so I used to say hello to the tortoise <laughs> on the way. And then I used to get to the greenhouse, and I would open the door, and I could even visit now. I just used to stand there and more or less just breathe it in, and then I'd be looking for anything ripe that yeah. I could pick before I went back. And I suppose it goes back again. They were the first people to teach me how to grow. And, mm-hmm. and the first time I've experienced tomato growing was commercially. So though my nan was retired she used to go and work at a local nursery so I couldn't have been any more than six seven and she took me down there and I was pricking out tomatoes you know they used to sow trays of tomatoes and and prick them out yeah so for me they're not only a, a staple part of what I eat but they're so ingrained yeah it's amazing in my life and I think and as far as growing your own, I think that that's. But I always say it's my hobby. I create gardens for a living, but but grow your own is my hobby, which means I can get it wrong. Yeah, just say. <laughs> yeah. But a sort of classic. Before we get into growing them, what would you do with a good summer tomato? A good summer tomato needs little more than salt, some great olive oil, maybe a bit of basil. Yeah. That is like at peak tomato season, a tomato salad, maybe a bit of shallot on there, or a few other things. But I think. As we said in other episodes, keep it simple. Let those flavours shine through for the the ones at peak season when they're at their best. You want to taste the tomato. So you just want to bring some other ingredients in which are going to enhance that natural flavour. But I wouldn't mess around with it too much. And then as the season goes on, I might play around a bit more and experiment. But yeah, yeah, for those first ones that just taste amazing, keep it simple. So is it the sort of what I would class as the sort of more simple Mediterranean herbs that you'd be drawn to just to... I actually think, yeah, a really, there's a broad spectrum of herbs that go really well with tomatoes. Obviously, basil is a classic pairing. Um, But if you're bringing in something like some cheese into the mix, then, you know, some thyme or rosemary or some oregano is delicious in there. Um, A bit of tarragon with tomatoes works really well. They they really pair nicely with herbs. So I think you can experiment, even like a lovely salad with some mint through it, kind of Greek style salad with some feta and some mint is so delicious. Just the freshness of herbs works so well with tomatoes. I'm doing that dribbling thing again. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, Uh this is terrible. (laughs) I just love sitting. I could just listen to you talk about what we're going to cook and what we're going to eat. So as far as growing, what have Mm. you done growing-wise with tomatoes? So I've had varying yes, with growing yeah. tomatoes um it's something my kids really like to grow so my daughter brought home a san Marzano plant last year yeah. and that grew really well which i was quite surprised at because i thought that needed more of a mediterranean climate yeah. but that did really well and then you know i like to grow some of the different colored ones because they find that really fun as well yeah. so the green zebra ones and things like that um gardener's delight always seems to do yeah. pretty well but I'm very much a kind of wing it gardener. So yeah. I find if I don't water them very regularly, yeah. which I am definitely guilty of, then it all goes the wrong way and they'll split and they don't turn out so great. Yeah, as I say, I've had varying success, but it's something that I love to grow because yeah. the kids really enjoy it. And I'm really hoping that I can get them loving tomatoes from a young age, unlike yeah. myself. That's the goal. So maybe you can give me some tips yeah, on no. how to be a bit more successful with my tomato growing. Yeah, it's interesting you talk about that summer. I think the summer that you're talking about would be that really hot summer yeah. when all of a sudden we were growing things outside. Uh, mm. I even had a mate that, that managed to get bananas growing wow. that year yeah wow. and actually got them to the point of being mm. ripe bananas so that's how mad it is and interestingly in this country now with that environmental change mm. and these sort of freak weather conditions that year exceptional mm-hmm. last year very mixed so yeah. everything was stop start and and then all of a sudden the tomatoes came late in the season mm. so i think that's the first thing for people to realize that this crop that we're talking about is very much going to be driven by the season that Mm. we have in our garden so as far as i'm concerned i i do two ways i i start them off seed wise probably on a windowsill warm windowsill probably late january time Mm -hmm. and then i'll start growing them all or what i might do is i might buy plants in probably about nine centimetre pots, so a little bit later on in the season and go straight into it. If you've not got lots of room to grow seeds, 
you don't have to worry because you can buy a plant ready to rock and roll a little bit later on in the season. But for me, sowing seeds, tomato seeds are great because I'm being realistic. You could chuck them over your shoulder and walk away and they would all come. It's amazing. You see, I've had tomato plants come up in the compost bin, come up here, come up there, that, all actually, over the place. I've had some of the yeah. most successful ones have just sprouted from last year's yes. where obviously the tomatoes have dropped and obviously yeah. reseeded. I, I was walking around a tree nursery the other day choosing some trees for a garden and there, there was a tomato plant growing out the bottom wow. of a tree in a pot <laughs> with tomatoes on, which means I suspect what happened is one of the workers was having his lunch. Yeah. Maybe just through the... This bit of seed or a bit of a going off tomato away, and of course it's just rooted in the yeah. pot, and it looks absolutely brilliant. But anyway, <laughs> back to sowing them. Sowing them, I just sow into a tray, peat-free compost, little tap. Make sure there's a decent sort of smooth surface, and then I'll sow them, and I'll, I'll cover with something called vermiculite, and that, which is basically a, it's like a clay particle. And what that does is just seals in the moisture. Always water from the bottom. I don't mm-hmm. water from the top. And away they go. And then once I've I probably grown them on to probably two true leaves, mm-hmm. and then I'll start to pot them on. So I, the first sort of pot that I'll put them in would be anything, probably, again, seven and a half, nine and a half centimetre pot. And then warm windowsill or as the frost start to go I can get them out in the greenhouse I'll get them going in the greenhouse I think anybody that's got heat in the greenhouse they can just drive it all the way through mm. so I think the first thing to remember is you've got a you need a warm bright place mm-hmm. you know? and I think we think with a lot of these things is where do they come from in the world where do they grow naturally yeah once you work out where it grows naturally you've got a good chance of you know working out to do and I suppose once we've sown going back a little bit tomato sort of plants as general they normally come as cordons so either what we call what you'd see is the long sort of stem one yeah, you know yeah. or little bush ones mm-hmm. so little bush ones they'll tumble around and I've seen people use those in hanging baskets uh, yeah. have you grown grown both or? yeah I have yeah, yeah I've done the hanging basket thing quite successfully yeah, yeah. cool and with the with the cordon ones how have, how have you grown those have you picked out the little side shoots yeah, or, yeah I've done that I think where I've always gone wrong is with watering I think yeah. if I've been on holiday or left them just been too busy to get out and water them then it all seems to go wrong is that quite important with growing tomatoes yeah I think a lot of the veg garden and and when it goes wrong for people Sometimes it's like you say, a veg garden is a very different from the ornamental garden. So any sort of veg, fruit garden, and it tends to be little and often mm. rather than an ornamental garden. Realistically, you can clear it off for a couple of weeks and most of the time you'll come back. And even if something's wilted, you can bring it back. And what you've got to realise with things like tomatoes, they'll, because it's a very short season for a plant, they'll react to getting really dry Mm. because the plant will instantly start to suck that moisture back in and your tomatoes but also on top of that the reality is as well what am I going to I've lost where I'm going then I'm starting to think about you cooking them so the idea that basically the short season no temperature that's what I was going to say so they can react to a few degrees one way a few degrees the other Mm -hmm. way cold at the wrong time of year will really stunt the growth Mm -hmm. whereas actually hot while you're away on holiday will really dry them out so I would say little and often if you're going to grow tomatoes make sure that somebody's at home Mm -hmm. to look after them while you're away so so it's a bit like having a pet you need someone around to to look after them yeah 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 yeah, I think, yeah, think about them a bit more, yeah, a bit more like dogs rather yeah. than cats. Cats are a bit more like an ornamental garden. <laughs> They'll do their own thing as long as you feed them. Whereas a dog seems to need a little bit more attention. Needs a bit of love. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm learning yeah. a lot here about yeah, tomatoes. Exactly. So for me, then it comes to varieties. And I probably do a bit of both. I experiment. Mm-hmm. Because I do what I do, I get sent stuff through the post, give this a try, that a try. Yeah. And then for a couple of years, I might experiment and I'll move from cordon, upright tomatoes, to bush tomatoes, to this variety, to that Mm. variety. And then one of them will jump out at me. And then I'll grow probably just that following year. So is there a a variety that you grow every year and it's your absolute favourite or do you always mix it up? It's really weird because if I go back to Nan, she grew classic. Alicante, Alicante tomato, and that was always a, a go-to. But you mentioned Gardener's Delight, really sort of 
you know, reliable, but I do like mixing up some of the colours, and I think that's yeah. the interesting bit. So something that's a darker fruit, a, a yellow, mm. a red. Um, and the shapes as well, because they just oh, look so beautiful, don't they? Yeah. When you have a, a variety of shapes and colours, yeah. they're all bringing different flavours to the plate yeah. as well, but visually they can just look so gorgeous in a salad or a tart, yeah. and that's really exciting as well. I think you're right as well. When you mentioned that, you mentioned flavour, because mm. we think it's a tomato, isn't it? Yeah. But so much more than that. But yeah. they are. But they all do taste slightly different, yeah, don't they? Absolutely. And even that point of being ripe, perfectly ripe, yeah. or overripe, or mm. just under that sort of that perfect taste in a way is. So tell me, with yeah. the green ones, how do you know when they're perfectly ripe? Because I've picked them too early, often. I think. If I'm honest. I just pick one off and bite it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say that there's, I can some, go with that. there's some wonderful way of doing it. So so for me, yeah, it's potting them on. And what I've set up in my greenhouse is a little sort of wiring system. So if you imagine every time they get to a point where, you know, they need to pot them on, I, eventually they end up in pots that are probably about 30 to 40 centimetres mm-hmm. across and the same deep okay. be, that'll be my my cordons my, my yeah. sort of standard sort of and then i'll set up a little wire system in the greenhouse i put a couple of horizontal wires in mm-hmm. and then i put some canes in as i'm growing them and tie them in and then as they grow what i'll do is i'll pinch out the little side shoots so as you've got that vertical and you've got the leaves coming out out of those joints you get those little side shoots they're taking a lot of energy mm-hmm. out of the plant so i'll pinch those out as it go up and then i'll i'll let the plant probably with that sort of thing, get to about four trusses, maybe six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I, I, I know I should stop at four, but in my head, but I, I'll get to that and then I'll take the top out of okay. the plant. Otherwise it will start doing this and carry yeah, on going. I've going. got to that point a few times. Yeah, And then with those then, it, it's all about the feed. Mm. So not just the watering. So with yours, we're feeding them. How often do you feed them? Oh, <laughs> Probably yeah. not often enough. I yeah. don't know. Every other week, maybe. Yeah. See, and, and again, that's all right. Yeah. But I would say decent sort of potash feed once a week. And and the easiest way to tell that really is you go into the the garden centre and you'll see there's the green pots of feed, which mm-hmm. normally tells you it's nitrogen, and there's some red pots of feed, which normally tells you half the time they've got pictures of tomatoes on them. Yeah. But they want that to encourage the fruiting. So I'll feed. Probably once a week. Okay. Once a week, watering. And again, depending on weather-wise, most of the time I'll go out there early in the morning, mm. cup of coffee in hand, just go up, give everything a really good soak in. Yeah. Um, decide from the weather whether the greenhouse is going to be open, whether the mm. greenhouse is going to be closed. And and in a way, just so little and often. And, and then really, as they mature... That's it. You start picking. That's how simple, them. in a way, they are. Yeah. Um, but I think for those, you know, the corns, I think if you've never grown tomatoes before, maybe it's easier to start with bush tomatoes. Because, again, a lot of those varieties, once you started them off inside, you could get them out on the patio, yeah. put them in pots. As we said, you've got the, the hanging baskets. Mm-hmm. We have to do it in. And as long as they've got a lovely, warm little spot, but feed them, water them. So a nice sunny spot will do the job because I don't have a greenhouse, but that you don't need a greenhouse. No, no. And I think in a way that's why it's lovely that we can go and buy tomatoes a little further on because a lot of people are not in the place to sow seeds. The element of that Mm -hmm. indoors, but it gets to a point. Even with me, Mrs. Frost starts getting a bit grumpy. Yeah, we run out of space. Don't want them all over the kitchen no, table. she's going, what are you doing? In the airing cupboard. <laughs> she the tomatoes. Is, I've got to grow them. You know? Yeah, yeah, they get a bit grumpy. Yeah, bless them. And yeah, in, in a way, that's sort of it. So, right, so I'm going to now throw it at you. I, I've, I'm going up to the greenhouse. Mm-hmm. The first tomatoes are just becoming ripe. I'm going to put a twist on this, all right? But rather than just having a simple salad, yeah, Mm-hmm. We're going to just cook with them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I've managed to get back from the greenhouse. We've still some in the pot. <laughs> what, what, what would we do cooking with them? Was? So something just nice, easy, quick, rather than salad. I don't yeah. know, maybe we've had one of our perfect summer days and it's pouring with rain. Yeah. I like when, we, when we're growing our own and we're growing these really interesting varieties, I think it's really nice to show those off and all the different colours and shapes. So... 
once we're past the salad um, time of year or we're just bored of salads, I really like to put them into a tart. Um, so I've bought one with me today for you to try, actually, which we can have a little nibble on at the end. Um, but I think that's just a really nice way to showcase the tomatoes and just cooking them that slight bit so they start to shrivel and the flavours intensify, but they keep their form and their shape. That's such a lovely way to cook them because you just enhance that sweetness and really bring out the natural flavours. And you can introduce a few other flavours which pair really well. So a bit of cheese is really nice, some onions, some shallots, some thyme, all of those kind of classic pairings that go really nicely with tomatoes. So a tart would definitely be my go-to for a nice summer afternoon lunch with friends. I definitely would knock up a nice tomato tart and then... When you get onto the gluts and you've got loads of tomatoes and you don't know what to do with them, I really like to make homemade ketchup or chutneys, something that's going to preserve that lovely flavour for the rest of the year. Because we've talked yeah. about how important seasonality is and eating tomatoes in season is a completely different experience to eating them in the winter. So I love to preserve that flavour for as long as possible. And making your own ketchups or chutneys, as we said, is such a lovely way to do that and you know you can enjoy your tomatoes all year round then i think you made the point earlier on which i think you're right when it gets to the winter most of the time you know if you can't get uk driven tomatoes in my head is you might as well use tin tomatoes absolutely yeah, yeah. i love tin tomatoes though they're such a versatile yeah. ingredient and I, it's something i always have in my cupboard yeah yeah dude so you mentioned this tart that's in front of us and <laughs> I, sort of, I thought i was doing really well not mentioning it at all. <laughs> the most difficult thing about this whole podcast thing with you is you're bringing food in you're then putting it in front of me then you're asking me to talk about growing it for with my stomach <laughs> turning <laughs> and everything's but the point we miss with this as well this smells incredible it smells so good it doesn't it like i said earlier just cooking the tomatoes off for a little while really intensifies yeah. the flavor of them and it smells so good and i think if i was eating things like this when i was a child i would have loved tomatoes we didn't have this kind of thing when i was younger um but now it's my mission to get everyone yeah. loving tomatoes, get my kids eating tomatoes. And I think things like this will really help because yeah, it's just delicious. Definitely. I think they pair beautifully with obviously garlic as well. So yeah. with me, if I'm in that position where it's a wet day and but the greenhouse is there and I'm going to mm. cook, it's a simple tomato sauce yeah. really. and just. But I don't even really let them break down totally. Mm. Sometimes when we get a little bit deeper into the season, I'll throw them into the oven with maybe a little bit of sort of onion and, and garlicky and just let them time or whatever it is that I've got and I'll yeah. just let them slowly roast down and then toss them around into something else. Yeah, but, delicious. Um, but yeah, I just love the idea of just, more or less just so they look like they're going to burst. Yeah, gorgeous. And I think that sort of idea when I'm cooking and just with the small tomatoes, I toss them around with a little bit of garlic and I get them to the point, you know, you used to talk, when you talked about potatoes, you said to me about good roast potatoes about getting to that perfection point mm. and I like a tomato when it's cooked enough that it's whole but as I put it in my mouth I can squeeze and it bursts yeah that's good that's just delicious isn't it and that tossed through some pasta like a really oh, simple man. tomato olive oil garlic sauce tossed through pasta is just such a lovely point in the year for me when the tomatoes are at their best and they don't need a lot of cooking like you say when they're really sweet like that in season just keep it simple. I'm proper in my element, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going, Mrs. Frost is going to listen to this and she's going to like really get stuck in. Me. She's going, oh, you're in love with her, aren't you? You're in love with her, aren't you? No, 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 I just talking about food. You know? that, I just love the connection. It's the connection yes. between growing it, understanding it, watering it, caring for mm. it, and then doing something with it I think when you put so much love and time oh. into growing something it would be a crime to not treat it with some respect in yeah. the kitchen and cook something delicious with it so yeah hopefully the two worlds colliding is a really good thing I think it probably resonates with lots of cooks and gardeners yeah. at home and yeah. we can see that in in this time yeah exactly and I suppose when we're talking about that sort of tomatoes let's not leave that alone because I think when people get into growing tomatoes then all of a sudden they might be growing a few aubergines. They might mm. be growing some chilies. Venture into cucumbers. Mm. Have you done any of that? 
I haven't. Actually, I've grown yeah. chilies on a plant in the windowsill. Yeah. My mum grows great cucumbers and yeah. I love all the odd shapes that come yeah. out of her garden and my kids love it as well. And that's just something you don't see in the supermarket. They're yeah. all perfectly straight and they look yeah. like the perfect courgette. But when you see them growing in real life in the garden it's just a completely different experience and again they taste so different the flavor of a homegrown courgette is miles away from what you can buy in the supermarket i think as well i think you know once you can nail the growing of tomatoes mm. those other plants you know the cucumbers the chilies you're thinking about the same sort of conditions yeah you know? last year and, and cucumber wise you don't need to grow many so i've just grow tend to grow one so one cucumber, let that get away. But just I tend to grow the short ones, so they're like mm-hmm. little fingers. And um, what I call sort of lunch box oh. cucumbers. Really simple. Build a little framework. You're looking after your tomatoes. You look after cucumbers, and I, and I reckon we must have had forty odd wow. cucumbers, you know, off the plant. And then the chilies. And what I do with the chilies is stretch it a little bit. So mm. I I might grow three or four. So I'll grow something slightly sweet it's more peppery like mm. and then i'll grow right through to something really hot but again i'll pick them at different stages there's a lovely dish that i cooked through the summer i'd been away i'd been away to the mediterranean and they were like a they were like a green pepper mm-hmm. but they were slow roasted down and i had it in a restaurant mm. and they were quite bitter but they tasted they were one of those when you go oh i'm not sure about that yeah so there's a Greek dish of kind of baked feta with these green it peppers, could be, yeah. which is really delicious. And they just have a yeah, slightly bitter flavour, maybe something like that. It is. Yeah. So what I did is when I got back, I experimented a little bit with some of the unripe, not so hot chilies, mm. and I recreated the same thing. So I think a lot of the time as well, we don't always need to pick these things at their perfection because there's other ways... Yeah, absolutely. A classic green tomato chutney as well. Something my mum always used to make at the end of the season when they weren't going to ripen. And it's like, how do we use them up? Because you don't want anything going to waste. And that's a really nice way to use up those last tomatoes of the season, isn't it? And just make something out of what could be a waste product. Yeah. And I'm not going to let you stop there. (laughs) Because I am that person that has loads of green tomatoes and thinks he's going to get around to doing something with them. Mm. And they're probably then the ones that end up in a compost bin yeah. that end up being brilliant plants. So when you say classic mm. tomato chutney, what would that be? So are we talking green green yeah, tomato green, chutney? Green. Yeah. So with any chutney, you need an acid yeah. and a bit of sugar in there yeah. to balance the flavours out. So it's, it can be as simple as that, cooking up your green tomatoes with some white wine vinegar yeah. and some sugar, a bit of salt to bring out the flavour. And that will preserve them for a year or so and you yeah. and then you're making something delicious to go on your cheese board for the rest oh. of the year out of a waste product but also fried green tomatoes are delicious there's so much you can do with those end of season fried tomatoes. green tomatoes I've not tried that then. fried green tomatoes bit of salt just brings them back to life a little bit they ha- they don't have the sweetness of a red tomato yeah. or a ripe tomato but yeah delicious delicious oh i'm going to give that a go mate yeah i'm going to give that a go so i think tomato wise I think we're about there. Start them off by the January, sow your own, grow them on the windowsill. If not, get yourself down to the garden centre, whatever, buy yourself. But make sure you buy yourself a complete mix. Mm. Try different varieties. Grow in a peat-free compost. Keep them well-watered, fed. Decide whether you want to go bush tomato, Gordon tomato. Feed them, wash from autumn, pick them, and then create... The wonderful dishes. I'm going to do that next year. I'm going to be more adventurous with my varieties and I'm going to make sure I don't go on holiday. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or maybe what you do is when you're away on holiday, I'll come around and walk them for you. Okay, deal. (laughs) And then I can cook something for you to eat with them. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think just remember, you just want to be in a warm, sunny spot. And the last thing really is remember where they grow in the world and it's close to that. Let's go. Okay, that's a great tip. Now can we get stuck into this? Let's get stuck in. I've I've had to go through this whole thing with the smell of this wonderful... So I'll tell you what you're eating, Go on, go on, and tell me how to cook it, because I'm definitely going to give it a go. So we've got a lovely tomato galette here in front of us, made with a nice mixture of different tomatoes, different shapes and sizes, and there's a bit of gruyere through the pastry. It's nice rich cheesy flaky pastry and it's a free form tart so you basically make this flat on a tray and put your tomatoes 
in the middle and then just fold the sides in. So it's really easy. There's no lining of tart tins or any of that mm. business, no blind baking. It's really straightforward and easy, which I love. They're my favorite kind of recipes. And you talked about garlic going so well with roasted tomatoes earlier. And this has got a nice bit of garlic through it as well. And it's just a lovely showcase of beautiful seasonal tomatoes and something really simple that you can do with them that looks pretty fancy, actually. It looks more than pretty fancy. It also smells incredible. And you used the word, what did you say, tomato? Gur. Galette. Galette. It's a fancy word for a tart, isn't it? I know, it? but I'm thinking galette. <laughs> so tomato, galette, because I, I, I'm thinking that I'll... Time I finish this, I'll be round. <laughs> but um, can I can I have Dig a taste in, in. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go for it as well. Oh my my my! Oh, I've thrown it down myself, which Making is a mess. what you can imagine I was going to do. It's so good. Down my jumper. Hold on. I think as well we eat with our eyes a lot, don't we? And I think that tastes mind-blowingly good, but. It's beautiful to look at. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've got yellow, red, smaller little orange tomatoes. And and what's wonderful is, yeah, you get that tomato, but then it, it soaks down into the pastry. Yeah. You'd be proud yeah. to take that out to guests, wouldn't you, for a kind of casual lunch or a get-together. It's something that is going to bring the oohs and ahs to the table, um, I think. And you go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to knock that out for a casual yeah, lunch. Yeah, just going to knock that out. <laughs> I'll show you, mate. It's pretty good. That's good. I can't wait for the next podcast. To be <laughs> I can't. This is amazing. And I promise you, I am going to have a go at every single one of these. And you good. need to follow me on social media because what I'll do is when I do them, right, I'll ping a picture up. Okay. And you can judge me. Okay. I'll give you a mark out of 10, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, be nice. Though. You can't go wrong, though, with a good food recipe. I mean, you can't go wrong. And what I'm going to do is take all of your gardening v- advice on board and be a bit more adventurous in Bless the garden. You. So we're both taking something great away from, from these are, episodes. I think it, so. It still blows my mind that, 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 in a way, these two worlds don't get brought together enough, do they? Yeah, absolutely. That idea that we have a few chefs on the on the telly that start gardening, but mm. but no one sort of pairs a gardener and a cook chef together and says, "Go on, go and have some fun." And, yeah, and it and just makes sense, it. doesn't it? The passion is just so obvious on both sides, and yeah, yeah, it just makes sense. This is wonderful. This is not a bad way to spend time. It's an all right gig, this, isn't it? it? Is. I'm quite happy <laughs> with life at the moment. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Anyway, have a go at making that tart because I think you might like it. But make sure you get a really good mix of good tasting tomatoes. That's the point of this is tomatoes are about taste. That's what they're about. That's it.